What is up, everyone, and welcome to Modern Day Debate. We are a neutral, nonpartisan platform welcoming everyone from all walks of life. If you're looking for even more fantastic debates, we are all over the internet, including your favorite podcasting platforms like Apple, Spotify, and Google. So if you enjoy debates, please don't forget to like, follow, or subscribe. Helps us get out there on the algorithm and get more juicy debates like tonight's Is NASA Deceitful? With our debaters, Mark Reed and Flatzoid here to help us find out. And if you enjoy what either of them have to say tonight, our guest links are in the description below. You can also tag me in chat at Amy Newman with your questions or comments for our Q&A section. Those super chats will get yours sent right to the top of the list. With that, I am going to hand it over to the affirmative for their opening statement. The floor is all yours. Hey, hey, good to see you. Thank you for uh, this opportunity. Um, I've wanted to be on that bank for a long while, so it's good to have a, I think, a worthy opponent, Mark Reed. Uh, so I want to say thank you to you guys. And, well, what can we say? I don't know if I'm going to be able to have a 10-minute opening, but I'm going to try my best. So I've decided I'm just going to give maybe four arguments, because if I forget too much, I don't think we'll get through them all. Uh, okay. Is NASA deceitful? I would say yes. Why would I think that you might have? Well, it's very simple. There are many ways we can present this argument. Uh, argument one. Yes, NASA is deceitful because they claim to be operating in a place that violates natural law. I'm sure you've heard that many times. Uh, what natural law, you may ask? Well, we can start with the first law of thermodynamics. We will start with the first law because it's simply energy can be create, cannot be created or destroyed. It can only be transferred or transformed. The origins of space, and thus NASA's playground, is founded on the violation that nothing can create itself. So that would be the seedful argument number one, because uh, you cannot have a space, I mean, it's a space agency, if it already violates the first law. It cannot, space can just not create itself from nothing. Then we can move on to Second law of thermodynamics, that is the law of entropy. This law states that entropy will always increase to the surrounding system, and thus it will fill the available space to the surrounding system, aka called space, which is also NASA's playground. So the problem again comes that the Earth is based on the heliocentric belief system as a closed system. Now, what do you think? Well, what's wrong with it? There's nothing wrong with that. Uh, the problem is it, it's considered a closed system and it has no physical bound. And matter is not allowed to leave the system in a close, uh, not allowed to leave the system in thermodynamics, it's a closed system. Uh, and <clears throat> so how, sorry, I'm trying to see, yeah, uh, lost my. So I hate to interrupt you, Flatsoid. Yeah. It seems like your microphone is coming in a little garbled. I just wonder if you couldn't just check to make sure that it's set to the correct microphone. Uh, yeah. Um, let's just check here. Because it said it works on my side if I test it as well. Maybe, should I just look closer when I thought maybe? Because that works better. That may be. I'm just sending love out there to you and the audience and... Okay, I'm going to just try to talk like this into the, the camera. To see it. Um, okay, so if it's a closed system, then you would require a physical boundary because matter is not supposed to be. Then we've got another contradiction problem. You guys claim that astronauts, okay, NASA, then, uh, they can go out into space, you've got, the, um, you've got things leaving, which is matter, but uh, sending rovers and everything to the planet. So now I'm going to say, we have yet to see any present demonstration where you can have gas pressure without the payment. Please note 
pointing to the sky is not a demonstration, but a begging the question fallacy without any demonstration to back it up. Also note, this argument shows that you have a lack of understanding that thermodynamic systems work in conjunction with the surrounding system always. This is why the hypothetic system named the isolated system is the universe. It's considered to be the universe. That's argument number one. So I would like, uh, if Marx are able to present as a demonstration that you can have gas pressure without compatible. Argument number two. Why would NASA need to have such so much fakery that gets caught out constantly? There would be no need to fake anything if it was real. I mean, there's so much footage out there that's showing it's fake, like using augmented reality and harnesses and all that kind of uh, spiel. Um, let me get to argument, argument number three. They use augmented reality and GFX to help sell their products. That's not really something that a space agency needs to use. Uh, yes, space is their product and they use it to sell your people to and the corporate hook, line, and sinker. Uh, this argument goes further. You may ask, um, therefore, the race to the moon, we had a, a friend likes like the FX experts. In the line of Stan Kubrick or Ray Harrison. Harris, what? Harry Howard. I'm sorry, that, that microphone is still absolutely terrible. I don't think it's the volume. I think it's something to do with the way yeah. that it's coming through. I'm, I'm having a little trouble hearing you. Okay. Uh, um, let me it probably is awful for the audience as well. Okay. Well, and um, what I will do for the... Oh. I'm going to quickly try and see what this sake of my other microphone. What uh, I will do for the sake of the audience is if you want, you can try to reconnect. I have you at five minutes, and I will give you not only the five minutes, but another 30 seconds or whatever on top of that. Okay, so I'm going to quickly leave and give you two, one minute. I'll be back. I'm going to try and save you my other mic. Sounds good. Uh, sure. uh, to our sure. audience, it may make the visual a little a little weird right now, but that's okay. What I'm going to do is hand it over to you, Mark Reed, for the beginning of your opening statement. The floor is all yours. Oh, really? Okay. Um, that's a that's a weird to do my, my opening in the middle. Well, I, I suppose, well, you know, you... Um, uh, um, yeah, Flatzoid can certainly start again or, you know, take it up from where he's at. So I'll just quickly run through mine. Um, I'll just share my screen uh just one second we do i do believe that mark it's going back and forth because now Mark Reed has disappeared. However, we have got Flatzoid back. Hopefully his audio is, and here comes Mark Reed back. Uh, is my sound a bit better now? I've said it to my other mic. You actually do sound, I believe, remarkably better. I'll ask. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm so sorry that, that I hit the wrong button. I do apologize. L listen, this is not an April Fool's joke. This is a real debate. Like, seriously, this isn't some kind of thing. So um, uh, are you okay so to go? So it looks like to... because he came back and his sound is good, I know it's okay. already been a back and forth, but I am going to give it back over to him. You've so yeah yeah of course that, of course no problem and sending love out to you all there thank you for being so generous with your time with us please keep on like following and subscribing as well as getting those tickets for debatecon 3.1 but with that enough of my blabbering right back over to you flatsoid i will also add another 30 seconds minute somewhere between that range of time floor is all yours again Okay, thanks. Yeah, so I just said before that argument one was the deceitful because of the laws of nature. Uh, that was the first law of thermodynamics and the second law of thermodynamics. I would just like uh, 
a demonstration that you can have gas pressure without the containment. Okay, argument two, I just said they get caught up constantly. Uh, why would they need to have constant fakery if it was real? And argument three, I was touching on, they use augmented reality and VFX to sell their product because space is their product and many people fall hook line in Singapore. This argument goes further to ask, since why do they uh, need, sorry, this argument goes further to ask why do they need uh, to befriend the likes of VFX experts in the line of Stanley Kubrick and Ray Harris Harryhausen? This brings my thought of VFX expertise would be employed for space travel. Why would you need, you don't need that for space travel. Uh, the argument also comes to that is, well, you could argue they need some advice on the cameras and aperture and so forth because they decided they're going to the moon and all that. But that claim would be conjecture. And they would just, con uh, they could just contact the product manufacturer about the best settings of space, I mean, and specs, because, I mean, they had uh, the hassle, Hasselblad, which they actually uh, fixed their camera, I can say, uh, modded the camera for a vacuum, to say you could say that. But yeah, um, so I don't see why they would need to get in touch with VFX experts for that. They say, you could agree they need, well, that's just the argument for, my, why employ war criminals like Werner von Braun, a person who was against the great nation of America and the ideals who killed many for this fight of, for freedom. Seems odd that you would employ a bunch of Nazi scientists to help you, the same people who you would be shamed upon for many lives they took without worry for the ideals in communism. How would the families of the fallen take the news that the same people uh, helping them to get to space travel were the same Nazis who killed their children and family members? So I can bring many arguments, but if it's just not going to get anywhere, so I just thought I'd bring these four arguments to light. That's it. Thanks. Thank you so very much, Vladazoid, for your opening statement. And with that, we're going to hand it over to Mark Reed for your opening statement. The floor is all yours. Because of the way that of our systems handled up, you might have to manually mute, even if. Yep, okay, fantastic. I'll share my screen this time and I won't click the wrong button, I promise. Um, just tell me when it is up on the screen. You're good to go. Okay, hello, my name is Mark Reed. Um, today I'm taking the negative of is NASA lying or is NASA deceitful? Um, I thank you for joining me and I want to thank Amy for moderating and Platzoid for being my debate opponent. Now, first off, the NASA mission statement is indicative of the way they are inclusive and work for the benefit of all humanity. They do provide a safe, stable working environment for their employees. And sort of it encompasses all of um, humanity and all of our planet uh, for the benefit of all. So they're very upfront with what their intentionality is. Now, people do point to the cost of NASA and it's 26 billion, which sounds like a lot, but it's only 0.3% of the entire NASA budget. And you can see that here. Um, of all the industries and the agents, throughout the US, they're actually very one of the smallest agencies um, in the US, with, of course, defence being much larger, income assistance and healthcare being much larger. Um, so NASA employees, there's about 17,373 employees, 35% um, of women, 65 men. They are inclusive, so white is the most common ethnicity at 55 percent but there is a diverse amount of people working there um if you include all of the other sort of industries um like um that work in the aerospace industry or the other companies in the aerospace industry i beg your pardon um sort of like uh, lockheed and boeing and all of these companies um the number of employees in the aerospace industry rises to 521,000 workers half a million employees are not lying about what they do and that does not include all of the aerospace personnel in the 77 aerospace industries across the world and easily over a million people work in aerospace across the world um, they're not all lying um, this is the eighth straight year or the, uh, for the highest satisfaction of any government agency in the US um, they treat their employees well overall the staff are very happy with the leadership um, NASA employees um, sort of so 
the accountability that they have, they report directly to the President of the United States. You, uh, the administrator is nominated by the President, but the Senate does have to confirm them. They do have a committee that overviews them, accountability and oversight. Um, that reports to another committee which oversees them, space and science. Um, they are subject to law, a coordination of aeronautical and space activities, and Freedom of Information can access all documents without a problem in accordance with all laws and regulations. Um, so these are some of the NASA discoveries that have actually helped us. Um, I'm just going to go through them quickly. There's been in developments in health and medicine, um, things like space blankets, which we use in first aid kits, um, transportation, highway safety, um, chemical detection, things like that. Um, public safety, like these firefighting suits, which uh, resist heat. And there's a reason why I'm going through this. I'll get to it at the end. Um, sort of temper phones, um, baby food, so food preservation, um, air scrubbers, um, water pur purification, solar cells, um, uh, computer technology. I myself have, have dabbled with OpenStack, which is a um, cloud computing product. Um, software catalog, they've released over 1,600 pieces of software. Um, powered lubricants, mine safety, flood safety. So what I want you to think about going through all of this stuff, these are all technologies you would expect from an institution exploring space and doing aerospace activities. None of it is CGI developments or, or, or things that they have developed that have been a ways to fool people. All of them have been practical, implementable technologies that for instance, like those firefighting suits, it's to do with breathing in hostile environments and surviving hostile temperatures, all things that you would expect from a agency participating in space exploration. Um, this is the technology that Flat Earth has produced. Uh, Flat Earth movement has actually been around for longer than NASA. They have produced literally nothing zero, zilch, nothing to help us in any way, shape or form. And now NASA definitely has a higher budget, but you would expect over the 100 of years or 200 years since the 1800s that the Flat Earth movement has started, it would produce something, but no, nothing, absolutely nothing. NASA is honest about its failures. Um, its first satellite on the left cat catastrophically failed and the Challenger disaster was the biggest failure ever. Now, uh, that took the lives of seven astronauts and was absolutely catastrophic for NASA's image and detrimental to their overall image. Now, um, in the aftermath, they participated in reviews, they improved safety systems, they were very upfront in what their failures were and how they failed. Um, this, is, this shows that they are honest about what they are doing. Now, this is this is actually a um, three um, NASA employees staged a protest at J.P. Morgan Bank. This is employee is Peter Kalmus. He studies biological systems and climate change. Um, with him were a physicist, Greg Spooner, and science educator Alan Chornak, as well as an engineer, um, Eric Gill. Uh, he basically said um, um, that that about the climate change that we've been trying to warn you guys for so many decades. We're heading towards a, a catastrophe and we've been ignored. The scientists of this world are being ignored. It's got to stop. We're not joking. We're not lying. We're not exaggerating. Now, this speaks to the strong moral fiber of NASA employees. And you may not agree with them about the subject here, but they will stand up for what they believe. And this guy was arrested for protesting what he believed was right. Flat Earth wants you to believe that people like this um, are unprincipled and are lying to you. But this is a group of people that will actually get arrested trying to stand up for what they believe. Now, why don't flat earthers trust NASA? Um, Eugenie Scott um, noted basically that usually it is extreme biblical literist theology, and I suspect that's the case in this debate. Um, Dr. Joe Pierre said it was the Dunning-Kruger effect, the Dunning-Kruger effect being thinking that you know more than you actually do when you think you are an expert when in fact you are not. And uh, Stephen Novella basically blamed it was partly ignorance and partly motivated reasoning that you have a motivation to believe something on very weak evidence, but another thing you'll believe, uh, um, you won't believe on very strong evidence. Um, so why trust NASA? 
In 100 years of Oradorn Nordics, which they have been upfront and honest with their failures as well as their successes, they are accountable to the government through uh, freedom information, account to the people. The main question I want you to consider is, is one that I've asked before. If you don't trust NASA for aeronautic and rocket technology and innovation, if they're lying, then who should we trust to handle aeronautics? Will it be the flat earthers? Will they be calculating delta V and vectors for aeronautics? Is it going to be people just off the street? Um, I can't do that. And I guarantee my opponent can't either. I mean, it's not like it's rocket science. Um, and thank you. That That's my presentation. I'm sorry if I rushed through that a bit fast. I did want to equalize the time, but I did have a full presentation. Not all. Thank you so very much, Mark Reed. And with that, that concludes opening statements. I do want to keep on sending love out there and reminding everyone that DebateCon 3.1 is about to be upon us. Not only are tickets on sale right now, but if you can't come to Texas in person, just for a single dollar, you can get that live stream feed and come see more great debates. But again, we're handing it off now to both gentlemen as we go into our 50 to our minutes of open dialogue. The floor is both of yours. Well, I, I start. I, I ended the thing. So you go, uh, flat, flat side. Okay, um, you sorry. start us off. Okay. Um, first, I'm going to, to say. Remember, the debate topic is: Is NASA deceitful? Uh, mm -hmm. Trust has got nothing to do for if they are deceitful or not. So that's already actually wrong because you don't need to trust someone if you're trying to figure out if they're deceitful or not. It's their intentions which makes them deceitful. That's what deceit means. Uh, I did pick up a few points there on uh, where you were talking about um, people are employed and whatever, so therefore not uh, lying. Uh, let's put it this way. Um, you get a lot of Muslim mosques that employ people worldwide. Uh, you would agree that, in your opinion, Muslim is not real, correct? Uh, that's correct, yeah. I, I, I don't think it is. Uh, uh, well, I mean, I know mo like sort of Islam is real. I don't think their beliefs are real. Right, yeah, I would agree with you. So, I mean, to me as well, the foundations of Islam is deceitful because of their morals they stand for and everything. So to me, that's also. But that comes to, uh, so we can say now, based on that same equivalence, uh, they employ many people, so therefore they are not deceitful. That, so that goes against the argument that you're saying, okay, they have this much employees uh, and everything. And now we can go to why would, how could everybody lie? Well, it's actually simple. It's compartmentalized. Um, if you're going to work in an area that, let's say, just produces the bolts for a um, certain um, craft or something that's, that's going to now, say, go to Mars or Venus, it's compartmentalized. You are specifically commissioned to do that bolt. Now, how it works with compartmentalization and the, the structure of um, mental uh, governance, you automatically assume what you're doing is real. Because you're literally creating physical product and it's for people are paying you and everybody's working together, as you said, consensus is, so therefore it's real. That that also, that doesn't mean that's not deceit. The people working in NASA aren't deceiving because they believe it to be real. This is, is NASA itself deceitful? Can they be trusted? No, because NASA itself, like I said in the opening, they're in a place that violates natural law. And what do they use? They use VFX. Okay, on. so this is Gish Gallup. You're going on to topic after topic after topic. So I'm going to interrupt here and start to address some of the topics that you've gone through. Okay. Um, yeah. Because you're, you've gone from deceitful to Muslims to uh, bolts for craft to assuming what you're doing is real, and then you're going on to another topic. So I'm going to cover all of those before we go on. Um, so I, when I you say will deceit, say that right now it's good, and you guys are going back and forth. But if it gets too spicy, we can go into intervals. But Mark, you were speaking right back to you. 
Sure, no problem. Okay, so when, when deceitful and trust are inherently related, so if somebody's being deceitful, you should not trust them. I'm saying you should trust them because they are being honest. That was the thrust of my presentation. Um, that is the sort of con contingency of those oughts. If deceitful, shouldn't trust. Honest, should trust. And that's a very, very basic thing. Now, Muslim mosque, basically, you're talking about two different things. You're sort of putting two different categories together because one is a religion and the other is a practical, implementable scientific and, um, agency that is overseen by the government. So when you go to um, people working in a mosque or praying in a mosque, their, their um, beliefs are completely unfalsifiable. There's no way you can falsify a ephemeral god that's somewhere out there. That's just totally unfalsifiable. But the people working in these industries would quickly see, very quickly see, that what they are doing does not match what they've been told to do. And in the history of corporations, we have multiple times over people that have been deceived in these corporations start to understand that what they're doing doesn't match with what they're actually being told. And we see this time and time again in, in corporations. Um, sort of just saying that, oh, well, people are just producing bolts. No, that's not what's happening. Usually um, production um, of, of equipment and things, I mean, NASA does do some in-house stuff, but they mostly outsource that kind of produ production because that's not actually what they're doing. What they're doing is aerospace and aeronautics, which means the study of weight, the design of these things. So, um, yes, don't get me wrong, there are people producing bolts, but probably not as many as you think. What they would do is they would manufacture somewhere else, have it in in house. Um, there would be engineers constructing things, but those engineers would be taking aeronautic principles into consideration, whether it will fly, essentially. And it's not just space. It also is aeronautics. So the design of planes. Um, you assume what you're doing is real. No, not really. I mean, they've been trained to do what they, they, they're doing and the principles that they um, have been taught are implemented and then work. Um, now we can go on to um you know wherever you want from there if you want to respond to any of those yeah thank you okay so we'll start first with that um yeah again compartmentalization doesn't make it uh real it doesn't mean that people are um actually lying compartmentalization works on the principle that you are mentally governing the people to believe what they are doing is like. So the people themselves are not the deceivers. It's NASA. Remember, the topic is NASA. So that's NASA as the whole. Now, uh, I disagree with you when you say it's not a religion because you guys do have a religion because you have to go against natural law. Um, like I asked in the opening, would you be able to demonstrate us gas pressure without containment because it goes against the second law of thermodynamics? And like I also stated, the first law of thermodynamics, which created space, also violates natural law. And the whole foundation of NASA is based on these two principles of violation. So we can go with that first. OK, um, well, compartmentalization, like at least a significant proportion of the po population of NASA would have to be lying because they're all involved in the principles that they've been taught. Um, the people designing the things would have to be lying. The people, the astronauts would have to be lying. The engineers would have to be lying. There would have to be so many liars at NASA. And, and I wonder how you come by, what percentage is it? And how did you come by this information? Now, gas pressure without a containment, we see that actually in our world. Because if there was a container around the Earth, then the gas pressure would equalise. So with a container, the equalisation of gas pressure would occur like in any other system we see. So if we have an uneven amount of pressure within, say, um, a bottle, a gas bottle, and there's only the container around it, all of that gas will equalise to one pressure. They don't have a different pressures going up and down. So the actual fact that there is a gradient of pressure shows there cannot be a container there or else the gas pressure would equalise. Um, now, space violates the first law of dynamic. No, it doesn't. No, it basically entropy says that all the 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 law of entropy says that all in a closed system, um, the the amount of entropy in total will in always increase. 
And that is completely consistent with the expansion of space. And you're saying, hey, it, it, it you know, it violates it. How does it violate it? Because you just keep saying that. Okay. Well, we'll first start on the first law and then I'll get to the second law again. Uh, the first okay. law states that no matter or energy can be created nor destroyed. That means it has to already have been there to be able to have the expansion. So would you be able to explain to us how the matter was there to expand? Sure. Sure. So not like when you say it comes from nothing, when when Lawrence Krauss sort of used the term nothing, it was kind of misleading and just the title of a book. So what they actually are trying to say is that um, at the, the space may have come from a quantum field, essentially. Um, that quantum field has no matter, no energy. So in physics terms, it's nothing, but it's not no thing, like in a philosophical term as nothing there. Um, or or um, there is nothing in my hand kind of thing. Um, we can't have nothing, right? Because if you have nothing, you have something. So nothing is an incoherent concept. But that's not what they're talking about in physics when they talk about no matter and no energy, i.e. what we sort of describe as nothing. They're talking about a background quantum field of, of um, um, quantum particles. So yeah, it's so not they, created. So, so it's not created. Be, yeah. And it's not destroyed that either. Matter, matter's always been here. Uh, no. So no. Then, Even so Big then, Bang how, cosmology how doesn't do say that. Physical matter, how do you explain physical matter just popping into existence then? It, it didn't pop into existence. Nothing. Nobody is saying that. That's a complete straw man. That's exactly what first law thermodynamics would do. No, no. It starts out as energy, right? Matter and energy, and well, I mean, matter is a form of energy, but energy can um, be changed into matter. You do know that, don't you? So it had to be there. Well, or something was there. Well, something was there. Yeah. So can yeah. you explain the origin of how it was not there, but it's there? So what, you you that. want me to explain how a quantum field collapses? For the quantum field to collapse, there requires yeah. something. So where was that something if it didn't create itself? Well, I, I don't know. It did. I don't know where the universe came from. This is the whole point. No, nobody is saying that they know exactly where the universe came from. I mean, Sean Carroll basically says, well, if the Big Bang was the start of space and time, then if you're sort of saying what was before space time, then you're asking an incoherent question. Because if time was at the start of the universe, before is a nonsensical statement. Um, so you're sort of saying, how was the universe? Uh, how did it come about? How did it form? And I, I don't know the answer to that. But you're saying, you know, I presume you're saying God, and you can't demonstrate that one either. That's the problem. Nobody knows for sure where the universe came from. They just assert it to be true. Now, I'm not asserting anything, but I'm saying that it doesn't violate the first law of thermodynamics because it, the postulation is that that quantum field collapsed into energy, and then that energy had matter. Nothing about that violates the first law of thermodynamics at all. Um, it doesn't, and, and the end of the universe is heat death. It doesn't violate the second law. Entropy will still rise until heat death occurs when there is no heat anywhere else in the universe. So it's not being destroyed. It's just being particles are so far away, there's no interactions between them, i.e. heat death. That's not, that doesn't violate the laws of thermodynamics at all. So you just validated my statement that you don't know where the origins was stating sure. yes the energy was there so it's just there so that would validate my point okay but now we can move on to the second law no no that doesn't just because i don't know how something happened doesn't mean you get to tell me that it just popped into existence because you don't know that i know how it popped into existence because we had how did it pop into existence we have a supernatural being that's above natural law aka god so he created everything because it's above nature. Okay, can you 
the, the can, can you demonstrate that? The heliocentric model is based on nature, not supernatural. So you have to abide by natural laws. God is above uh, natural laws. He's supernatural. He created the natural laws. You understand? So he doesn't need any natural law to create anything. He just creates it. So just because you claim... Story, you guys don't have a rigid story. Well, just because you claim that a supernatural being did it doesn't make it true. It's just your assertion. And it's a hollow base assertion because you can't actually demonstrate how it was done or that a god did it at all. I could claim that a magic unicorn did it and is above natural law. Doesn't make it true. So you okay. you don't have an explanation of how it happened. What you have is a crutch, just an explanation post hoc that is inserted and you say, no, that one is true. And and while the honest person will say, hey, I don't know how it occurred, that that's the, the honest truth. But okay. um, for you to claim something, you, you're obliged to demonstrate it, which you did not do. All you did is reassert it. Okay. I'm on the process. I understand we can't demonstrate it, but I'm on the premise of right. take the logical argument one, logical argument two. Argument one, mm -hmm. nothing created everything because it was just there and then it exploded. Argument two, not nothing. But something that's above nature that can, we both can't demonstrate it. But the logical inference is supernatural law is more plausible than non or not supernatural. But that's okay, I just argument because we're gonna you have the one view on it. I, I, I just went through how saying it's nothing is a straw man. I just went through that and then you just used it again. No, it is a straw man because when we say like when we say the universe began, it collapsed. Is a quantum field nothing to you? It has matter, so it requires something. A to quantum be field has matter. Yeah, well, you had energy. It had to implode in itself. No. It means it's something. It's something, yes. Yeah. So if I say a quantum field collapsed into um, the the Big Bang, the, the origin of the universe was a quantum field, does that mean it was nothing? Yeah, because something had to be there. But you just you just said that a quantum field was not nothing. Something had to be there to collapse. Yes, I'm the you, quantum field. The inference it violates the first law of of, of thermodynamics because no, nothing it doesn't. can be created or destroyed. It can only build off of what's already there. No, it it doesn't because because um, when you say nothing can, it, it, it is something, and it can. Yeah, so. What's what what is the building block before something is there? Quantum field. It had to have it had, had to have an origin. Origin means it had to have a starting yeah. point. So that means yeah, that's your eternal that starting point. Okay, so what was the origin of God? It's got to have a starting point. What's the origin of God? He is the origin. He's supernatural. Yeah, Remember, and quantum field is the power. origin. He's hang on, hang on. Power. Quantum field is the origin. Why do you get to special plead and say, hey, God is somehow exempt? Everything's got to have an origin, but my God doesn't. And this, I might add, is not the topic of this debate. You've gone completely sidetracked onto this. Um, mm -hmm. Like, I don't get how, like, whether or not, whether or not that statement is true, it is what the scientists at NASA believe, that they don't know the origin but it could be a quantum field, right? They believe it. Are they being deceitful if they believe that's the case? No, they are not. They're being honest with the information that they have. If I, if I, um, if I truly believe that that I can summon a giraffe, if I absolutely believe that, am I being deceitful? No, I'm not. Deceitful means you're purposely and intentionally lying. So even if your explanation of, oh, well, it betrays the first, which it doesn't, um, if they believe that to be the case, that that's within the laws of thermodynamics, then they are not being deceitful. They are being honest. And that I have to agree with you, because if it goes against the first Well, then why are we going that, over this? And that means they're being deceitful. But like I said, this is going to be mute because you have a view on it. I have a view on it. Let's move on to the second law on why it's being deceitful. Right. Maybe. So the second law is stated, contain, stated, container pressure. Yeah, 
sorry. So you stated uh, closed system will always just seek, uh, it will seek equilibrium, therefore no pressure gradients. That's false because we live in a dynamic system. By the way, pressure gradients comes after having gas pressure, which requires the containment to have the pressure in the first place. There's a lot of reasons we do have pressure gradients in the system and can be demonstrated. So my ask to you is, to, for you, can you show us a demonstration where you do not need containment to have this gas pressure? Well, the only place that we don't have containment is um, around large mass bodies, but we can sort of tell there's a pressure gradient. Um, so what if there is a container? You're saying you have to have a container and have pressure, right? So if there is a container, why doesn't it equalize? Because we live in a dynamic system. We got that doesn't mean cycle. anything. Yes, we got cycles. How does that work? What's the actual process of that working? What What is keeping it from equalizing? Gas behavior. Remember, if you have... Uh, no, on, no, 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 no. Gas, gas doesn't have a behavior. No, it gas just follows behavior. natural law. Are you serious to say that? Gas doesn't have a behavior. What do you mean? Can you describe that? What what behavior are you talking about? When you change temperature of a gas, what happens to it? Yep. It's behavior. Uh, it either expands or contracts. So gas has a behavior then. So you're going to concede mm -hmm. gas has a behavior. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. So you have temperature changes. You have volume changes in the full system. You have uh, pressure changes. All these things are interlinked to create the pressure gradient. At ground level, okay. at ground level, do you have the um? Do you have the calculations for this, please? Can you cite me something that sort of says this? You wanted to, because your whole well, atmosphere... well, just give me the just give me the calculations you have on the um, changes in gas um, um, density that would cause this, and and you know I can I can have a look at them. You don't need to obfuscate from trying to move from you demonstrating. No, no, you, you've, you've made a claim. You've made you've made you a, claim a claim that the density that of gas will change the pressure gradient. Now you need to demonstrate that that is in fact the case. So if you could produce that, that would be great. I can show you demonstrations where gas pressure, uh, where we have containment with pressure gradients. But we first need you to support the premise that you can have gas pressure without containment, that requires demonstration from you first. Okay, so um, gas um, pressure, right, um, when it contracts, there's more air molecules, right, because it's contracting. And yeah. when it is warm, it expands, which means there's less molecules, correct? correct. So why is it that towards the earth where it's warmer right and it's colder up the top are there less air molecules when there should be uh where is there more air molecules when it should be less because it's warm and higher up where it's cold there's less air molecules where if it was contracting there should be more explain that one no uh when it's contracting that means it's moving uh slower remember when you're on the ground there's more for the gas particles to hit off of. There's more of a uh, collaboration of all gases. So you've got trees to hit off, you've got mountains to hit off, people, you've got all the cycles of the densities of gases down on the lower, lower level. So it's more compact. Now, when you go higher up, there's more area to fill. Now, most of those dense gases are still hitting all over on the uh, lower ground because it's more com compact. The more you go up, the less uh, moles you have to hit off the wider area. Now, you've also got temperature to play and everything. But remember, the temperature play with a less amount of that's why you got Avogadro's law, because you've got the amount of gas in a certain area, which gives the pressure. So if you've only got, let's say, five moles that's gone up at a certain altitude and it gets hotter, you still only got that amount of moles hitting around in a wider area. Therefore, the pressure is lower. Now, again, yeah. you still have demonstrated. Uh, yes. Wait, you're gish galloping okay. again. Stop. You're going over point by point well, by point. I will address every so single point. So you've got to stop doing this. I'm going to just allow Flatsoid. You have 30 more seconds to finish up your point, And then we're going to hand it over to Mark. Okay. Yeah. So I just made an, I just explained to you in very simple terms 
why we have pressure gradients. Now, I'm still asking you, please demonstrate gas pressure without containment. Yeah, so this is this is weird because you basically said, oh, well, mountains and things like that are what causes the pressure gradient, which is one of the most ridiculous statements I've ever heard in my entire life. Mountains and people and the ground and telephone poles, I guess. And, and there's more area up the top, so that's why it occurs. There is no sort of temperature that will cause this gradient. And the simple fact that you cannot produce any kind of documentation or any kind of calculation to show that temperature will produce this gas gradient rather than gravity is kind of ridiculous. And it also seems to indicate that um, you, you, you don't understand what the gradient is at all. Um, you, you, you have... Um, much more air at lower altitudes than you do at higher altitudes, right? I regard it as constant. I explained it. No, you didn't explain it because you didn't actually say how it occurred. You just made a claim that it is something that makes it and then blamed it on mountains and the ground, um, which is a weird statement because the pressure gradient doesn't just go from mountains and then quickly go into a small gradient. There's a gradient, so it goes all the way up, um, getting thinner and thinner and thinner as it goes up. But none of this sort of says why um, NASA is being deceitful at all, because um, your entire argument seems to want to, you want to shift it into, oh, well, I'm going to prove that Earth is flat, which isn't the topic of the debate. So you're just doing a dodge and switch. So explain why NASA is being deceitful, because the onus is on you. You have to... I'm basically saying, hey, they believe what they say. They they believe that the earth is round. They aren't lying about it. You're saying they're lying about it. Prove that they're lying about it. Don't ask me for proof. By natural law, they're lying about it. You require containment. Otherwise, entropy will increase and it will move into the surrounding system. Now, again, okay. you've obfuscated... Remember, they're lying because we are in a closed system. They are saying we're going out of that closed system into space. Now, to have an open system adjacent to another system, the higher pressure will always equalize to the lower system. I've explained the reason why we have lower moles. It's called Avogadro's law. It's the Boltzmann constant. Okay, I've given you reasons. Now, I'm waiting for you to show how you can have gas pressure out containment because NASA is deceitful because they know you need containment and they're claiming to go through that containment that has no boundary. So that's why. So here's the thing. Here's the thing. You keep quoting natural law and gravity is a part of that natural law. You're just <laughs> trying to change what the natural law is so it does not include gravity. And that is entirely dishonest. Just because you don't understand physics doesn't mean that gravity doesn't exist. And gravity does exist. You have to explain why natural law suddenly doesn't include gravity, which you haven't done. So perhaps you could prove that gravity doesn't exist. Perhaps you could include some calculations and some actual things that you have done to demonstrate it. What experiments have you carried out? What have you done? Because I can name the experiments we have done to prove gravity, the Cavendish experiment, the uh, vacuum chamber dropping of different articles experiment. I can name experiments you can do yourself to show that gravity exists. Well, the debate's not about gravity. I haven't said the word once until now. Secondly, it's not about pressure gradients either. Secondly, secondly, you cannot demonstrate gravity holding gas indefinitely in an open system. Again, the onus is of you to prove, yes, prove or demonstrate gravi uh, gravity can hold the gas down without the need of having containment. Pressure can only exist in containment and therefore realize back to my first argument NASA is lying because if it's an open system, we would not be able to have gas pressure to have the um, pressure gradients. If it's a closed system, 100%. But then they can't claim to go to the place they're going to. So yes, NASA is deceptive. No, they're, they're not deceptive. Gravity is a thing. We can measure slight changes in pressure due to gravity with inside some containers. Definitely can. Um, the whole thing is that um, in order to demonstrate and, and sort of so 
Blattzoids going to an unfalsifiable claim kind of thing or, or, or basically requesting proof that is outside of what it's possible to demonstrate. Because you, in order to show the gravity of Earth and its effects, you need something, the mass of Earth. Um, and that is the Earth. And we can see um, sort of atmospheric pressure gradients on, on other planets that have mass as well. But, you know, Flaxoid will then just beg the question and sort of say, oh, well, that's not real. We haven't been there kind of thing. So it's just sort of a article of faith. And we could see him go to the faith article. That's all it is. It's an article of faith that it can't be real, as in my presentation, the first reason this has been studied by psychologists. Um, so the, the whole thing is, if you have a container, like a, a bottle or something, and you have gas within it, it will not make a pressure gradient. Even if one side is warm, like you put it, warm it up on the bottom and it's cool on the top, it will not make a pressure gradient. The only way that can happen is by gravity. That is the only way. And no, you're wrong. You're just wrong. And if I can bring up a demonstration showing you wrong. Go for it. But anyway, back to what I was stating. Um, can you show me? Uh, what does it say? You were saying um, gravity is the reason for pressure gradients, correct? Why does low pressure um, follow high pressure? No, I asked a simple question. You were, that's what you're saying. Gravity is the reason for pressure gradients. In the atmosphere, yes. Okay. Does Now, Listen, I want to ask a question. I want to ask a question. I want to ask a question. I answered yours. Does low pressure out? follow high pressure? Yes. That's our guess. Then why right. doesn't it do that in the atmosphere? I explained it. Because of gas. No, you didn't. You gave an excuse. Volume. Remember, the larger the volume, the easier it is to have the pressure gradients. Then why does low pressure follow high pressure in our atmospheric weather systems? Easy. Uh, high pressure because follow low pressure in our atmospheric systems. Uh, okay, let me just... Yeah, and that is the behaviour. In our atmospheric systems, high pressure follows low pressure. Why does that not happen in the atmospheric gradient? It does. Why? It does. It does. Entropy it does. So of time. Entropy is the error If that of time. was the case, if that was the case, there would be an upwards wind constantly because lower is always a higher pressure. Again, remember... Gas behavior. Now, this, like I'm getting, you are obfuscating from uh, showing your point. Uh, can you see my screen? Yes. We can. Okay. So I'm not going to play the sound, but uh, to all. he took a uh, canister, he welded a gauge on the top, and he put it in a ice bucket. He's got another um, gauge on the top that's linked to the bottom of this closed canister. It's in a ice bucket. He's heating up the top. He's getting a difference in pressure reading from the top of the container to the bottom of the container. So therefore, it's yeah, he's heating up the top. Pressure gradient in a closed container, which you just said is impossible to demonstrate. Now I'm going to ask you again. Please show me where is where is the heat show coming you now from? He's going to the top to show you the difference. He's heating it up first. Let's go to where is the heat coming from? In this demonstration, the heat gun. No, no, in, in Earth's atmosphere, where is this heat coming sun. from? The sun. The sun. So the top is heating up. Through less amount of gas. Remember we talked about Avogadro's law? No, 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 no. Yes. Less amount yes, of yes. gas. You're saying that the heat is causing the less amount of gas. It can't no. be that heat is being applied to a less amount of gas if the less amount of gas is already there. If you got what five, is causing it? If you got five moles in a white in a larger area and it gets heated up, it's still just five moles. They're just moving faster, they're expanding more. Now okay. if you go lower where it's more com compressed, it's together, you have now 50 moles, for instance. The pressure is okay. because there's more moles to bombard off of something. Hence, yeah, I realize you misunderstand physics. So if you if you put a thermometer at the top of this, would it be hotter or colder than the bottom? 
it was the pressure was high at the top. No, 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 not would would the pressure uh, well, would the 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 thermometer be hot? The, would the air be hotter at the top or the bottom? Sorry, the air pressure. No, no, no. Would the air temperature be hotter at the top or the bottom? On the demonstration I just showed you. Yes. It's cold at the bottom. It was in the ice bucket. Right. The pressure was right. lower. And that up. that is the equivalent of the sun striking our atmosphere, right? Correct? Hang on. Yes. Make and then it should be hotter at the top and colder at the bottom, correct? That's what, what you just right. said. No, the demonstration was you can provide, but if I can provide you pressure yes. gradients in a closed containment using gas behavior. Heating up a gas, listen, heating up a gas, remember that containment when it comes in, it's got a, it's at equilibrium. It's not pressure gradient. So it's got the same molds at the top as the bottom of the container. Everywhere, it's in equilibrium. Then yes, he, and that he, heat is the sun, right? Yeah, this this is not about the sun. This is about gas wave itself. No, then no, 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 no. You said that that heat is the sun because I asked you where the heat in the atmosphere comes from, and you said the sun, right? Yeah, but is, is the Earth in equilibrium? What does it matter? It matters. You're saying without matters. this. You're saying without this principle, it would be in equilibrium, right? Why, why, why are you? talking over me if he has a container it's already in equilibrium he then puts it in the ice bucket therefore the the, the container is becoming and the air on the bottom is colder right right so then he puts up the heat at the top then the it sun. starts having the pressure gradient because the gas from the top is it's what's being heated the gas at the bottom is not therefore gives a different in pressure readings now with earth it's simple we've already got the conglomerate of the gas is lower down and less moles at the top. Less moles to get heated up. Why is that? Heated up. You get it? And radiation works going through and radiating the ground, which causes more heat at the bottom. But why, if the source of the heat up the top is the sun, is the bottom? Right? Because bottom, your example, bottom. this is why your example does not work in the slightest, because you have a system where you're making the top hot and the bottom cold. And the problem with that is that if that was the Earth's atmosphere, then um, that would be reversed because Remember. it is warmer towards the Earth than it is towards the top. You can't claim it. that it is temperature that does it and then explain and basically then flip it around so that it's it's colder at the top, top for the earth and then warmer at the bottom. You have just disproved your entire experiment. Congratulations. Sorry. First of all, it was an experiment. It was a demonstration. Secondly, you asked me if I'd be able to demonstrate, actual demonstration, having gas pressure gradients in a con closed container, which I've just simply done now. Now you've realized that you have it from okay. you have not yet demonstrated your claim, gas pressure without a container. So would you please You have not actually that? given any of those readings that you have taken to see whether that would work in the Earth's atmosphere. You do realize that, don't you? That you can't you basically just said, hey, there's a different difference in pressure. What was the temperature? What was the pressure? You haven't you haven't recorded any of that. You've just said, hey, this will work because I've made it something work in my thing. You realize how unscientific that is, that when you're talking about something, you, you really should have. And this is what I'm asking for. I'm asking for your independent variables and your dependent variable. I that if, hey, I change the temperature for this amount over this amount of gas in this space, then the dependent variable will change by this amount. Sorry, and the, the problem is that flat earthers refuse to provide any of this because they can be shown to be wrong through natural laws. But he basically wants to say, well, gravity is not a natural law. We'll throw it out. Doesn't matter. While at the same time proving that just using heat won't actually make this work. Yet I'm the one demonstrating gas behavior in containment. You on the other hand just saying, no, nah, uh, you don't understand. You believe the earth is flat uh, i can demonstrate gravity 
uh, and without any gas whatsoever. Gas down. Yeah, grab the holding gas down indefinitely. Can you show? Can you show gravity holding gas down indefinitely? I can because show it gravity. Which, it doesn't matter which gas you take. You can take a fish tank of sulfur hexafluoride. It so will disperse. Let's get on to gravity then. If gravity is true, then why do, say, in a vacuum chamber, feathers and a bowling ball hit the ground That's at the same gas. time? That's not gas. We're talking about gas. I don't care. It's gas gravity. I'm talking about gravity. I'm talking about gravity. I'm talking about gravity. Again, gas behavior of a gas, I'm oh, sorry, gravity on gas behavior of a gas and on a physical, um, I can I say, bowling ball or something, a ball, a bowling ball is not a gas particle. It's two different things. So you can't... Are you saying gas is unaffected by gravity? Gas. It's a false sequence. We're talking about gas behavior. So I, I want you to show us a demonstration where gravity, that's not actually even a force, can hold down indefinitely gas particles. Sure. So we just have to have a heavy gas. That's all. Sulfur hexafluoride, which you say is a very dense gas, correct? One of the densest I'm sorry. gases you can get. Do you know there's still dispersion with sulfur hexafluoride? Um, what's a heavy gas? I'm oh, sorry, you asked me to find something then. Okay, so so th this is the problem. You have gases of two different masses, right? Two different mass? Yeah. One will go lower than the other. One will yeah, will settle to the bottom. One will be higher. And never settle, though. They're always conglomerate. They never That's settle. Like Dalton's law. Do you understand Dalton's law? Okay, so, but you do realize that one's going to be pulled lower than the other, right? They don't get pulled. Gas moves in all directions, not just one direction. But what, okay, so I feel like you're you're just being willfully ignorant here, that basically if you have a light gas, like hydrogen, okay, so if you have a container, hang on a second, if you have a container with hydrogen and oxygen, which one will be at the bottom? They will mix if it's a closed container, correct? Oh my. You really? Said, is that what you think? You claimed which one will equilibrium, did you not? Uh, that was yeah. great. great. So yeah. why are they not in equilibrium then? Because they're not the same gas, they're not the same density. I, I they're not the same you know, mass. Both, you know how our, our air, air and atmosphere is. This is this is the worst argument I've ever heard. So you but you're you're, you're claiming you to believe, believe, you're claiming to believe that if you put a light gas like hydrogen and a heavier gas like oxygen, they're just gonna intermingle in a container, which is the That's most cool. ridiculous thing I have ever heard. That is just so silly. You no, know, you just you just literally conceded that you could have pressure gradients in a closed container, which you said 10 minutes ago is impossible by your own emission. Uh, no, that, that's because they're, they are different gases. So pressure gradient in a closed system, then. different gases. We have different gases in our atmo sphere. But they don't, and why, that, that's ridiculous because it was a closed container, all of the um, oxygen would go down to the, the bottom. That's ridiculous. Okay, so again, you understand how gas works. It moves in all directions. There's still the denser yes. gas also high up, just a less amount of it. So if, if that were true, then um, hydrogen would not have the buoyant properties that it does. You think there's no hydrogen here at ground level? No, I do. Not even any percent of hydrogen at all? No, I do. And you think that, remember, like I said, Dalton's law, we have a certain amount. Yes, because of you're talking, gases, you're talking. Which is comp no, which is totally bombarding into each other at every okay. single so you do to. Why does a balloon full of helium rise then? Because it's less dense and the pressure around it okay. forces okay. it up. So what's how do you calculate density? Uh, I'm not here to calculate this. You're obfuscating from demonstrating. No, no. Gas. How do you, you mention density? How do you calculate density? How do you calculate density? How do you calculate? It's a question. Gas. How do you calculate density? Don't dodge. Don't dodge. How do you calculate it? I can counter this by saying Archimedes principle predates gravity by a thousand nine hundred years. So doesn't matter. So does. 
Look, matter. leeches Our predate modern well. medicine. It doesn't mean they work better. How did Archimedes principle work without gravity? And you guys okay, are just... starting to talk over each other, but I love actually <laughs> enthusiasm. It's actually been a fantastic debate, so thank you, Mark and Flatazoid. We have about 15, 20 more minutes of open discussion before we switch into the Q&A. Please keep on okay. sending me all of your questions at Amy Newman. But with that, Mark Flatazoid, the floor is yours once again. Okay, density is mass um, over volume. Mass divided by volume, right? And how do you calculate mass? TVM, no, I'm saying, I'm not moving to gravity. You calculate because, mass because you listen, won't answer the question. You calculate mass Archimedes with gravity. You still obfuscate. Archimedes principle did not require gravity when it was prescribed. Archimedes came predated, I think it's like 1,900 1, years or something before Newton came up with the force of gravity. Yet we had ships working on Archimedes principle for a thousand years. Ar now, Archimedes principle is displacement. Exactly, of pressure, not gravity. Right. So gravity, how does yes, displacement, displacement. You just said, how does displacement work in a vacuum chamber? Easy. It's still working. If it's a vacuum chamber, it's just less moles. They're still bouncing around in the vacuum chamber. And hence, yes. you still haven't provided evidence of gas pressure without containment. So the um, Archimedes principle does not work without gravity and mass because the more mass that you put into water, the more it displaces. So the more weight it has. Yeah. And in order to calculate weight, you do need to have gravity. No, you don't. It's just pressure. Yes, you do. How do you calculate? What's the calculation for weight then? I d it's pressure displacement. Now again, No, no, what's the calculation for weight? Again, you said you, you could calculate weight without hard. gravity. You're trying very hard to obfuscate from your... No, I'm here. not. NASA is deceptive because the Earth is classified as a closed system, which lets matter through, so therefore it can only be open. Therefore, we could not have air pressure to have the pressure gradient. Your affirmative uh, bias here is we do have an open system. I, therefore, can have gas pressure without containment. Please demonstrate it, Mark. I think this is the 30th time. No, 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 no. You don't get away from this. You don't dodge and run, you sir. You said that, hang on, hang on. This is my turn to talk. You said that you could calculate weight without gravity. So what okay. is the okay. equation for your calculation of weight without appealing to gravity? What is it? Okay, I'll, I'll tell you something. I'll give you it. What is it? If you. Yep, go I'll for it. You. No, no, no. That's all I want. That's all I want. I give will it to give me. it what to is you it? once you've demonstrated gas pressure without containment. Yeah, the Earth. That's that's gas gas. No, well, it's atmospheric pressure actually. It's not gas pressure. So you're kind of conflating Sorry, the two because atmospheric law. pressure is not the same as gas pressure. So the fact that gravity works on our awesome. atmosphere gives atmospheric pressure. But now you can give. You don't need me to answer that anything else to give the equation. Hang on to give, give the equation of um uh, um weight without appealing to gravity. See, you know you can't do it. You and know so, you have no equation without gravity, and that's why you're not giving it. So, gentlemen, Busted. we have 15 more minutes. We're going to do one or two minute increments, but you can feel free to give up your time as whenever you want. But Mark just talked. Flatazoid, the floor is yours. Thank you. Uh, yeah, again, I appreciate it. Uh, again, Mark, the topic was NASA is deceptive. Uh, my argument one was why they're deceptive is because they're claiming to do a something that violates the natural law. I can't help you don't understand how gas behavior works. The ATMO, yeah, the ATMO falls under every single gas law there is. Dalton's law literally just debunked you because it's the conglomerate of gases, argon, nitrogen, CO2, oxygen, or whatever. So therefore, gas still has to abide by gas laws. Just because you have a belief that it's atmosphere doesn't take away the gas behavior. It's still gas that has to abide by gas behavior. So one last time, can you provide us any demonstration, not pointing to the sky, that's a belief, any demonstration that the reason we have these uh, pressure gradients without the gas moving anywhere, without containment, show us a demonstration. 
Yeah, there's plenty of demonstration with sufficient gravity to do it. Plasma, for example, is a demonstration when the plasma of stars and things can actually cause a uh, um, a pressure gradient without actually um, um, having a container around it. And we know this can happen upon massive objects. Um, even even in very large containers, we can we can. Um, yeah, can it, it's it's. Can I count it that quickly? Can I count no, that? no, you can't. Can you um, and and this is just a dodge because hang on, no, this is my time. Have some decorum, sir. We're gonna hand it back over. Absolutely to Mark, ridiculous. But then hand it right over to you, Fatsoid. Yeah, learn to take your. Like I gave you all the time you wanted, and you just jump in. It's it's Sorry. really disgusting. Um. Yeah, and, and this is just a dodge because he wants to sort of go to flat Earth and not whether NASA is lying. It, it's just a flat Earth debate dressed up in, in you know, sort of lipstick kind of thing. He hasn't actually demonstrated why NASA is lying at all. He just has a faith belief. He believes there's a God. He believes that the Bible says the Earth is flat and therefore it's flat. It is a religious belief. And we've heard that out of his own mouth when he starts talking about the origins of the universe, which he can't demonstrate. And just because his misunderstandings of physics, he wants to say, hey, that doesn't work according to natural law, but gravity is natural law. So he doesn't get to make that appeal. He's trying to say that a part of our scientific understanding is wrong without having to prove it wrong. We have observed in stars, on the planet, all over the place, that uh, atmospheric pressure, and that's atmospheric pressure, not gas pressure, atmospheric pressure can exist without a container. Okay, thanks. Uh, yeah, like I said, I can get it. When you create plasma, you require a chamber, a container. And by the way, since when is on Earth we breathing in plasma? We're not breathing in plasma. Secondly, again, you have yet to demonstrate gas pressure without container. The one that's not understanding physics here is clearly you, Mark, not me. Secondly, <laughs> yeah, we've been showing, you've just been saying this whole time, now our belief. And you should stop going and making arguments on my behalf. The only reason is because of God. No, mate, I believed in God way before I became a flat earther. Secondly, like I stated, Archimedes' principle worked way long before your beloved gravity concept came to being. Thirdly, gravity is not a force, and it violates then F equals MA if you say it's not a force. So it's either force or it's not a force. Okay? Still, I'm keeping you to show me gravity holding down gas pressure without the need of containment. You can't do this. All gas laws still abide to your atmospheric belief. Dalton's law, Avrigan's law, Boyle's law, Charles Dulcet's law, it doesn't matter which gas law you want to create, they all require containment. Okay? It's as simple as that. So NASA is lying because space cannot exist the way they say it is to exist. You need 30 containment. seconds. No, so all of these talk about gas pressure within a container, and that's the dodge that he's doing. That's what they're, they're applied to. But they're not applied to atmospheric pressure, and that's where he's doing the dodge. And and so there's only one person here lying, and that is Flatsoid, because he doesn't understand physics in the slightest. Because the, the hilarious part, the, the hilarious part is a flat earther basically going, no, gravity's not real. You don't understand physics. Appeals to natural law when gravity is within natural law. And I never said gravity's a force, so that's a total straw man. Gravity is the bending of space-time, which he suddenly says, oh, no, it doesn't work throughout all of these things. So I wonder when Flatsoid is going to publish his paper on the non-existence of gravity and get a Nobel Prize. Remember earlier I went over Dunning-Kruger where people think they have more expertise than they do. Basically, what we have here is the classic case of Dunning-Kruger. We have a person who is not trained in physics. Um, yep, so I'm appealing to physicists, people who do know what they're talking about. You're appealing to your own mistakes, ignorance, and misunderstandings of the subject of physics. So when's your Nobel Prize going to be uh, awarded to you, Flatzoid? Okay, again, you saying... I am not a physicist or whatever. It's just appealing to authority. I don't have to care what authority says, just like you don't. I abide by natural laws like everybody. The argument here is we require gas pressure 
without containment. You're not understanding that all gas has to abide by gas behavior is not my misunderstanding, it's yours. And by the way, your atmospheric uh, belief is based on Dalton's law, Avogadro's law, Boyle's law, and Charles Dussek's law, which are all gas behaviors. Now, you can tell me, oh, gravity, gravity, all you want. Again, you require a force to have an acceleration. So therefore, no force, no pulling of gases. I 100% agree. Gravity is not a force. I never even brought it up saying gravity is a force or not. All I said was, based on your model, it's not a force. So if F equals MA is true, then gravity can't do any, uh, can do it, but seconds. then it's not gravity. If it's not true, then the other way around. That's it. Yeah, so um, it's funny that he appeals to uh, natural laws and then can't even give a single equation for weight and no equation at all because all of these laws are written up in science as equations. But the problem with uh, flatzoid and other flat earthers is they don't want to provide equations because then their work can be checked. They're like a little boy going, hey, I've got all the answers. And then when the teacher says, hey, well, give me your, your actual calculations, they say, no, you're not allowed to check it. Um, it's, it's childish. It, it's unscientific. It is absolutely dishonest because they know as soon as they actually provide any calculations, they're going to be checked. And when they're checked, they're going to be wrong. And I think deep down Flatzoid knows this. And that's why he desperately avoids giving any calculations whatsoever. So if you could give me the calculations of weight, that would be great, flat. So go seconds. for it. Give it to me now. I'll see. Again, again, I don't require to give you anything because you haven't given what I've asked for this whole debate. I said I will give you an equation on Archimedes principle without gravity if you demonstrate gravity, holding gas pressure, having gas pressure without containment. That's what you have obfuscated from this whole debate. Now, again, if you even know how weight works, it's not pulling. It's the pressure that's applied to a scale. A scale works with load cells. It works on pressure. It's pressure mediation. That's it. It's got nothing to do with gravity, even though your belief says it's gravity. There's no pulling force. So therefore, it cannot be gravity giving weight. It is simply the pressure applied to the scale. So please provide your yeah. demonstration of gas pressure without containment. Yeah, so that's a complete misunderstanding of what gravity is. It's not supposed to be a force. It's the bending of space-time that causes um, things to fall towards objects of mass. Like, just because flatzoid doesn't understand it doesn't mean it's not real. Now, I've gone on to say, hey, I can demonstrate it within a... Um, demonstrate gravity on objects within a um, vacuum chamber where there, there is no gas. And he says, no, 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 no. That's, that's not good enough. It has to be a gas. So for some reason, Flatsoid thinks that gravity doesn't work on molecules the same. He thinks that for some reason, gas is in its own special category. So we talk about being against natural laws. Um, the whole idea that there are effects that he uses special pleading for to say, hey, gravity doesn't affect gas. For some reason, it's all up to gas behavior, but doesn't actually, like, he wants me to just demonstrate gravity, but only on gas is, is just ridiculous. Like, the whole idea he is so um, dishonest, and he will not give equations. He won't give equations because he knows it's wrong. And yes, it is up to him, because I said that gravity is part of a calculation of weight. And he said, no, it isn't. So I said, well, give me your calculation of weight. He has made a claim that it's not part of it, but will not actually back that claim. And that is why you should not believe a word he says. He's lying. And before I let you go on, Flatzoid, I'm going to give each of you one more round of back and forth, and then I'm going to let you both have closing statements, tell people what you got going on on the interwebs. But right back to you, Flatzoid, for your last of the open discussion. Thank you very much, Amy. Oh, uh, yeah, it's very simple. I said I can give you an equation if you've done what I've asked first, this whole debate. Demonstrate Dodge. To me, yes, pressure without a container. I can literally take that G constant and change it to P for pressure if I wanted to. It would give the same results. Your gravity belief is only the ideal 
that it's pulling mass attracting down to mass. And I 100% agree, gravity is not a force. So therefore, F equals MA is then false, according to your uh, belief. And just call me me dishonest and uh, at harming me constantly is not showing good for your cause. It's just showing you cannot demonstrate your belief system to be real. Thank you. Thank you so very much, Flat Soy, for your last back and forth, and then Mark Reed handing it over for your last back and forth. Yeah, so he hasn't shown anything because when you ask him how you calculate the equation, he won't be able to tell you what P is or how to calculate it at all. And he's not giving any kind of readings or measurements for his equation. So I'll look forward look forward to your you know paper being published, Flat Soy, about how you calculate weight without gravity I'm, I'm sure you've done tremendous work on it you know as i as i pointed out flat earthers have not produced anything of note in the entire time they've been around and flat soil is no exception he does not understand physics he doesn't understand the role that physics play uh, gravity plays in physics he doesn't understand anything about it he's just basically making assertions and then requesting unproducible things because he knows you need the mass of a planet but we have observed plasma in stars we have observed the earth using gravity pull it down we've observed gravity if, if a container is holding it then what i want flat soy to do is show me the container where's your proof of the container give me the container where is it give me a piece of it and with that we are going to conclude the open discussion we're about to be moving into the q a so tag me with your Chats, questions, and super chats at Amy Newman. However, Flat Zoid, I want to hand it over to you one last time. If you would like anything final to say on the subject and tell people what you got going on. Uh, thank you very much. Yeah, uh, just a quick thought. Thank you, Mark, again for this uh, debate. It wasn't actually a challenge for me, sorry to say. This is ad hominem and call me, you understand. Just shows your level of ignorance to the subject. Yes. You said the same about, about me. Gas behavior. I'm sorry, I'm having my closing statement. When we have gas pressure, we are talking about gas behavior and gravity then, as you put it. So having a false equivalence of a bowling ball is not going to work. Um, secondly, I have shown an actual demonstration and got you to actually concede in omniscient that you can have pressure gradients in a container, which you said earlier wouldn't work. I have stated natural laws which are in nature, always accepted and always provable. You have appealed to a belief system that's not demonstrable. By the way, lower ground should have stronger gravitational pull. So therefore, gravity should be stronger at the bottom of mass. And therefore, gas would always just pull there. And we would always die because we would just the whole time breathe CO2 because of gravity. It's the stronger the more mass attracts more mass, correct? 30 so no. seconds. Thanks again. Yeah, I'm just going to say I do have a channel. So, yeah, do look me up. Thanks, guys. Thank you so very much, Flat Zoid. And we're about to go into the QA. But, Mark Reed, the floor is all yours for your closing statement and what you got going on. Yeah, so we can see in um, sort of containers that that we do have um, gases separate. There's a gravity method for separating gas. In fact, fluids do exactly the same thing. It's just that gas does uh, mix a lot more because the uh, uh, particles are less. Uh, there's less. There's more space in between the particles, meaning it can mix a lot more. But we do have separation, um, and and we do have separation of fluid and and. You know, this sort of sort of ad hom. Flatswitz was been saying exactly the same thing that I don't know the physics. I'm not appealing to my knowledge of the physics. I'm appealing to physicists' knowledge of the physics, who absolutely refute Flatsoid and can explain all of this. I'm, I never claim to be an expert. But Flatsoid isn't an expert either. In fact, he's suffering from Dunning-Kruger, which is sort of thinking he's an expert when he's not. He doesn't understand that gravity is a natural law. And he's sort of saying, hey, it's outside natural law. What he is describing is outside natural law because gravity is a natural law. That's what it is. 
So um, the entire thing is he's just projecting. He's sort of saying, hey, you don't know the physics. Um, he doesn't know seconds. the physics. The physicists all say that he's wrong. Um, he hasn't, he's dodged completely his NASA line. He just wants a flat earth debate. That's all he's after. So he's been really dishonest in the way that he's asked for a debate, sort of saying, hey, we'll discuss one topic. Oh, I want to discuss flat earth now. Um, so, you know, just, just absolutely... Um, I don't see why I should trust him at all, because seriously, um, this is supposed to be a topic about whether NASA is um, lying. And it turned out to be just a flat earth debate, which is obviously what he wanted. So, you know. And time. And all right, gentlemen, thank you so very much. For... And just one last point, one last point. I noticed that he never addressed a single one of my points. We went through all of his points, never addressed one of mine. Not one. Not one. But more fun in the Q&A as we are switching. So keep on tagging me in chat at Amy Newman. But the first super chat of the night, Iron Horse to the Glurf. How come sun and moon rise in the east and set in the west, but stars go around in circles? And I believe that is for you, Mark. Uh, because of the, the rotation of the Earth. Um, the sun is in one direction from the Earth as it as it rotates around, so it uh, always rises and sets in the, the same place. The stars do the same if you're at the equator, by the way, and this maybe is something Flatsoid can, um, can explain, why the Earth's um, stars at the, um, at the equator go, go in the, the direction while at the... Uh, um, poles they go in circles so that that question slightly malformed because it's only at the circum um circumpolar stars go in circles not at the equator thank you for the super chat iron and your response mark and then a five dollar super chat from nominal mark do you believe the moon landing videos are actual footage of astronauts on the moon that we see in our sky Yes, because they left reflectors up there that we have shots of, and you can bounce lasers off the reflectors. They're called box reflectors. They're basically a squarish um, mirror reflectors that if you shoot a laser at them, they bounce on two sides and go back to the origin point. So we can actually test to see whether that's the case. Thank you, Nominal, and your response, Mark. And then a $5 super chat from Yavier. Are flat earthers even open to changing their minds? What piece of evidence would they accept as proof of a globe? Well, for starters, it would be great if you could have a demonstration for any of the beliefs, but we don't get simple things like gas pressure without containment. Thank you so much, Javier, and your response flat and a $20 super chat from Corey Clark. Thank you, Corey, for all the love and support. NASA is responsible for some of the greatest advancements in human history. They had ever invented everything from WD-40 to thermal blankets. Don't you feel like you're being disrespectful to all those hardworking people's achievements? Nope. I mean, war criminals like Werner von Braun was a rocket scientist who bombed people for a living. Uh, can we now say, <laughs> yeah, can we now say that um, we are being disrespectful to him for the, the uh, technology he bestowed on us? Okay, I just got to address that because this is, this is something I did want to cover. Sure, today, you have a minute. True. Okay, so von Braun basically was a rocket science. He was a member of the Nazi party, as all scientists were required to be, regardless of what they actually believed. When he was brought over to the US, there were scientists that didn't. He didn't bomb people for a living. He did rocketry. And the Nazis maybe used that for bombing. Sure, the V2 rockets were a thing. I'm not going to deny that. But that wasn't his intention. When he came over to the US, he made fast friends with the director of NASA, who, surprise, surprise, was Jewish. So, you know, Flatsoid, again, is just being deceptive. Ooh, Flatsoid, you have 30 seconds because it was directed towards you. Okay, thanks. Uh, very simple. You do not go and befriend someone who, who you've been fighting for in the last 
how many years killing your family and friends. That's the deceptive part. They were playing together the whole time. And all right, thank you so very much, both of you. And then we have to give a big thank you so very much, Corey. And then we saw that Corey Clark actually gifted <sighs> 10 different memberships. He gifted five, and then he gifted another five. And so I just have to say thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Well done. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> thank you so very much, Corey. And thank you, our Modern Day Debate audience and all of our subscribers and members out there. And all right, continuing the list, nominal for $5, Mark Reed... By your logic, is dark matter not just unicorn farts? I don't know what dark matter is. That's the whole premise of dark matter. We don't know that. That's the whole premise that we don't know what it is. Um, possibly, yeah. I, I don't know. I'm not. I'm not a physicist, so I wouldn't. I wouldn't really have an opinion on dark matter. Um, some people claim it doesn't exist. I don't know if that's true either. You know, so um, there, there may actually be something providing gravitational force to the universe out there. Um, black holes we didn't think existed for a long time. And then the bending of space light, of, of light around that distortion, that incredible mass, we, we found them. So, you know, just because we, we don't know exactly what something is at the moment doesn't mean we won't know. Thank you so very much, Nominal, and that response, Mark. And then a $5 super chat from Cool Lambo. The Earth is losing helium, a detectable phenomena. How does this compute with the claim of a closed system? Simple. How do they, um, how do they prove that? Is it just hearsay that they're losing helium and that goes against the heliocentric belief? Earth is supposed to be considered a closed system, which means no matter leaves the system. NASA says itself, Earth is considered a closed system. Contradiction. Yeah, we're losing helium. Um, yeah, that's a really good question. I just want to say that. And yeah, you, we can. And, and I just want to say as a personal note, don't use helium balloons and stuff. We are losing helium. There is not enough decay of radioactive matter to replace it, which is where it comes from. So please stop using helium balloons and it's a very then, useful uh, element final statement yeah uh but by the way nasa is the largest users of helium by the way yes yeah and... we want to save for scientific purposes that's correct yes and all right we're moving forward thank you so much cool lambo and for your responses panel and then Five dollar super chat from Tim Pryor. Thank you so very much, Tim. If you think NASA is so deceitful, then stop using their technology, hypocrite. Ooh, coming in spicy. Good point. No, I've got nothing to say about All that. All right. <laughs> Thank you so very much, Tim and panel, and we are moving forward. A $5 super chat from Magdalene. At FZ, there is a pressure change, flat, there is a pressure change without a container every time a storm front moves through, ding dong. It's the same system. It's a it's a dynamic system. That means the whole volume has a dynamic system inside. So those pressure changes are inside the same system. You don't need containment between every pressure system inside a system. But there is a pressure gradient, is there not? Yeah, in one system. It's a complete system. The but there's Earth no container system. around that system, around the weather, you the haven't provided thunderstorm. There isn't. But the thunderstorm, there's no container around that pressure system. The right? thunderstorm is in the same system. So you're defining a system as anything with a container around it. No, if you got, let's, for instance, you say you've got the universe as a box. Now you've got a, another box inside it. That box is the earth. There is so a weather system isn't a system. Cycles, there's weather systems inside that. Oh, it's a system. system. It's a weather system. It's a system. Yes. Earth is a thermodynamic system. Weather systems 
conformity is a system. Thank you. No, no, that's all I need to hear. That's all I need to hear. Where the system is a system, there's a pressure gradient in it. And well, then, good question. Flatazoid, it was your question, so you get the last few seconds. Thank you. Yeah, I can't help the guy who doesn't understand gas behavior of gas in a closed system creates weather behavior. And all right, thank you so very much, Magellan, for your super chat and both answers panel. And then Gordzilla, $11 super chat. Thank you so very much. The homeless Precious. tweaker shelter. Let me, let me get this pronunciation right. The rhythm. That homeless tweaker shelter sent to the moon in 69 says all you need to know about whether NASA is deceitful or not. Sorry, Mark. It ends there for the honest. Yeah, I, I don't know why it's a, a, a you know a homeless tweak shadow is the best technology we had at the time, and certainly I'll challenge you to design anything better. But of course, flat earthers don't actually design anything; they don't do anything. They they basically just you know sit around and claim that the people actually doing things are lying to them for some reason. Um, because it doesn't really matter whether the Earth is round or flat. We'd explore it either way. I, I don't even understand why these people are supposedly lying to us. Um, there seems to be no reason apart from, oh, they want to destroy my Bible or my religion or things like that. Or just they want to feel special by having some secret knowledge that nobody else does and sort of pretend that they're more... Um, experienced in physics than actual physicists. Well, I hate to burst your bubble. You're not, and you're wrong. Thank you so very much, Gordzilla, for your super chat, and Mark, for that response. And a $10 super chat from Earth is Life. Flatzoid, why can't the container holding, container holding Earth's atmosphere be detected by radar? We don't know how far it is. So. How do you know it's even possible to detected with the radar what it's made out of how far does how far does radar go you tell me you don't want to make the cave we can bounce radar signals off the moon and how far are you claiming the moon to be 240,000 miles does that make it well, now there's, there's... Miles? <sighs> this is another debate all on its own well no i can just look it up that's okay and all right, while you're doing that, we are moving on. Thank you so very much, Earth is Life and Panel, for that response. And then nominal, $5 for Mark. What are the independent and dependent variables in your proof of gravity? Okay, so Cavendish experiments. You've got basically a weight hanging from a line, um, like a pendulum. So the two, um, uh, the two dependent, uh, sorry, the ind independent variables are the weight you've got on the end and the distance to the other weight. So distance away from a mass and the mass of the secondary object. You can also use the mass of the primary object as well. So those two independent variables make the dependent variable, the amount of deflection caused by that on, on that weight towards the other weight. So there is the answer to your question. Can I, can I say something about that? First of all, you only have one independent variable in hypothesis that causes the DV. You can't have three independent variables in one hypothesis. Uh, that's not true. And you have to have that's... the last word. And so... Unless you have something else to say, we're moving forward. Yeah, so when when you're doing an experiment, you can have as many independent mm. variables as you want. The The thing is, and, you know, Flatso doesn't understand science, is you only alter one at a time and see the result. This is what you do to test the effects of that one independent variable on the dependent variable. So um, while we have multiple independent variables, we can alter each one one at a separate time in each experiment. So we alter, yeah, I don't know why you're doing hand signals. It doesn't it mean anything. different hypothesis, um, not one hypothesis. Sorry, because I'd say. Well, they didn't ask for hypothesis, did they? You stated, did they ask for hypothesis? You stated multiple IVs in the same hypothesis. Oh, well, then I, I misspoke. I just meant in, in an experimental situation, mm -hmm. you can have multiple independent variables. Wow, okay, just being pedantic. 
Um, so you can alter each of those. So yeah, and the hypothesis would be if I alter this this um, pendulum weight, how how does that affect the deflection uh, deflection um, of that weight hanging there, which is the um, dependent variable? Or then you can do if I alter the distance to that other thing, how does seconds. that affect? the dependent variable. If if you alter the weight that it's being attracted to or the, the stationary weight or the fixed weight, how does it alter? So you asked for what you asked for and then, you know, I've given it and then, you know, also how you can actually run this experiment to find out that gravity is real, which has been done like millions of times. Oh, you're muted, Amy, for some reason. Yeah. Oh! have to do that at least once a podcast send in love out there in fact it's a great reminder that you can all get tickets at debatecon 3.1 live in texas as we are traveling through our q a you could travel to texas or you can just for a single dollar see our stream live are we doing this live is this live it's live a ten dollar Super chat from Maticus Minot. Mark is the son of Sloth from Goonies 1980s. Hey, you guys. Now, I want to say I'm sending love out to Maticus. We always want to uh, attack the beliefs and not the people, but we do appreciate all of the love and support that you've sent us. We'll give, a, a, like, a four second air for anyone to respond. No, I agree with you. I, I'm not, I there saw Goonies go. once. I'm not sure what that. Kango that for ago, 22 the New Zealand question for Flatsoid. Do you know that gas molecules have kinetic energy? You know that these gas molecules do work against forces like gravity and collisions with other stuff. What is the temperature of measure? Ding! Yes, gases, molecules have kinetic energy, but they are elastic collisions, so they can only change direction with a collision, not gravity. Thank you so very much, and we really want to do send all the love and support, Kango, for giving us that amazing super chat. And... Another $10 super chat from Earth is Life, Flatzoid. Why do the density towers mix while in freefall? Is it because they require a downward acceleration for the liquids to stay separated? Good question. First of all, first of all on your globe, it's the Earth rising up, not the you falling. So that goes against what you're pulling. Density, if everything's falling together at the same rate, it's not going to separate because it works on the pressure of the differences of density. Thank you so very much, Earth is Life, and for that explanation flat. And then a $5 super chat from Rastaman Flatsoid. Please explain the difference between mass and weight and give the simple equation for weight in terms of pressure doesn't exist. Very simple. You guys believe that uh, it, <coughs> pressure for density is pressure um, equals mass uh, divided by, uh, <coughs> sorry, P equals MV, okay, by volume. So that's the pressure. But you guys believe it's uh, gravity has a constant of G pulling it down, therefore G constant. But that G constant can just be consistuated with P because it's just based on pressure going through density. That's not pressure. Um, it's density equals mass divided by volume. Yeah, P equals equals M no. divided by V. Yeah, pressure. Density is pressure of the. Remember, it's a compactant of that mass inside a volume, so it's pressure. The more mass in a volume, the more pressure. And all right, thank you for that responses, uh, panel, and the super chat Rasta man. But a two twenty super chat from Keith Man. Thank you so much. One liter of water is displaced. Solve for buoyant force. 
right? Your Archimedes principle. Just replace that G with a P. And all right, thank oh. you so oh. very much. I'm sorry. No, you're good. Yes. One time, it's all yours. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So pressure is for so the bond by area. Um, yeah. Never mind. That's okay. I have to hand it over to you, Flat, though, for your final statement because the question was yours. Time is back to you. I love how he laughs about it, but he cannot provide evidence that it's not the pressure because, by definition, it is pressure. And all right, thank you, panel, for that response, and Keith Mann for your super chat. And then another thank you so very much, Earth of Is Life, a $10 super chat, Flatsoid. Instead of bickering about gas pressure and perspective, why not take that flight from Johannesburg to Sydney? It's only an 11-hour trip. Figure that out on Flat Earth. Hmm. I've got family in Perth and stuff. So, yeah, it doesn't... We can fly that same route on a donut if we wanted to. Is the Earth a donut? No, definitely not. <laughs> Thank you, so. Oh, and it doesn't answer the question. If you can do that route on a donut, it doesn't make it a donut. Just like you guys say you can do it, so therefore globe, it doesn't make it a globe. It doesn't make it flat either. It like makes the it flat earth models flat. that we've seen, you can't travel like the same amount of time from, say, um, uh, Europe to America and Johann uh, uh, Johannesburg to Perth. It takes you know the same amount of time. I think you are trying to equate to the Gleason's map, which is only a longitudinal, yeah. a longitudinal and time calculator. It's not latitudinal. And I just want to say we have fifteen what? more minutes left in the Q and A. So if you want to guarantee that your super chat or question burning desire is read. Please send them in now. Tag me at Amy Newman. I want to continue thanking our interlocutors, Flatzoid and Mark Reed, their links of which are in the description below. However, another $5 super chat. Thank you so very much, Nominal. If 95% of the universe is made up of unicorn farts, then space-time is bending those farts. Einstein the Avatar, the fartender, perhaps? A good one like with Fartimus one i do believe that is for you okay. mark and they were they did have question uh, marks at the end and so if 95 percent of the universe is made up of unicorn farts then space time is bending those farts question mark einstein the avatar yeah, no, I don't believe that unicorn farts exist, but I don't believe that a magic man created the universe either. So, you know, these are things you would have to demonstrate are actually true, which unfortunately, you know, Flatzoid and the rest of his ilk cannot seem to do. They just assert it under a faith belief. And thank you so very oh, much. Great. Do you have something to say? All right. Sorry, just my gas pressure like containment. So goes back to him. But he can finish it. And all right, exactly. Mark, final word. Yeah, so th this whole idea is um, sort of it, to take take what I said about the the you know origin of the universe and say, hey, um, if 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 um, unicorn farts have mass, as gas has mass, and which you know my interlocutor has acknowledged already, then gravity has an influence on it. Now calculations show that. In fact, the weird part is that he said P was M divided by V, but if weight is mass um, um, times gravity times pressure, how, how does that equation work? It doesn't work. So, you know, um, if, if unicorn farts have mass, then, yeah, gravity has an effect on it because, you know, weight is gravity times mass. Thank you so very much, Nominal, for... What are you doing there? Are you saying you're going to punch somebody or pressure, something? Where are you going? Pressure. Weight is pressure on the scale. Yeah, this this is a debate, not like a, a dance-off kind of thing. I don't know what you're doing down there. I'm just showing it's pressure. Five dollars, super chat. And thank you, Samara. 
$5 super chat from Farron Salas. Thank you for all the love and support, Farron. $10,000 flat earth sextant challenge still up for grabs flurfers should be easy to collect if celestial navigation on a flat earth model exists. Would be a challenge if it wasn't just a straw man from his opening statement. Thank you so very much, Farron, for all the love and support. And then thank you, Flat, for your response. And then $2 super chat from Ethan W0406. Mark of the Beast, prove to us you're wearing pants right now. Uh, actually, it's Beast of the Mark. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, okay. So I am definitely wearing pants. Love the shirt, by the way. Oh, and thank you. Yeah, I got it from. I love this shirt. See, ladies and gentlemen, modern day debate. We are here making connections, and I'm sending love to Farron and Ethan Magellan. Five dollar super chat. Flat says the dome is too far for radar. And then when asked how far radar can see, he doesn't know. This is typical flurf dishonesty. No, it's simple. We don't know how far it is or what it's made out of. As simple as that. We don't have to uh, back up any claim that we haven't made. The positive claim comes from the globe side with distances, not us. It's just like when you take a uh, go to a restaurant and you order a steak. Do you know to know the cow's origin or where it came from? You know there was a cow. It doesn't mean the cow didn't exist just because you don't see the cow. Thank you so very much, Magellan. And for that response, Flatsoid. And then another super chat, $5.50 from Keithman. Nice dodge, Flatsoid. Try again. If a rock displaces one liter of water, Calculate the buoyant force on the rock using Archimedes' principle with pressure. Coming after you, Flat. One need off the stretch. There, one need Okay, whatever. All right, thank you so very... Yeah. Oh, no. Thank you so very much, Keithman, and for that response, Flatzoid, and... We are moving down to Congo for $5.50 again. Thank you so very much. Question for Flatsoid. Why is it harder to carry a weight up a slope or upstairs than along a flat surface? Easy. You disperse more energy. And all right. Thank you so very much, Keithman and Congo. Another super chat from Magellan. Flat, density and pressure are not the same. When a gas is heated, its pressure goes up and its density decreases. Good point. Good point. All right, thank you so very much, Magellan. In fact, thank you all of you guys for your continued support and for that response. And then a $10 super chat from Samar, Samir, Samar, sending so much love. Flatzoid, let's say we renounce the current working scientific model. Do you guys have an alternative model to move cars, fly planes, light light bulbs? Something we could use, or should we live in caves until you do? First of all, uh, it's not scientific. The globe is based in pseudoscience. I have not yet seen. Yeah, Mark, and probably once. This would be a challenge to you, Mark. Give me a scientific hypothesis and experiment for your globe beliefs. Uh, just because we have an explanation of gravity doesn't make it gravity. It just means there is some kind of uh, natural tendency with matter. Doesn't make it gravity. Yeah. Looks like it's caves for everyone. And then flat, you have the final word. 
Uh, yeah, if Mark wants to live in a cave, that's his problem. Technology is not science, by the way. It's just based on the knowledge from science. Oh. Thank you so very much, Samir, and for your responses, panel. And then another $10 super chat from Nominal. Thank you so very much. You claim, Mark, you claim yep. that Cavendish proves mass attracts mass, but then claim that gravity is the bending of space time. Is there an experiment that proves the bending of the time? Yeah, well, Einstein proved that when he made testable predictions on how light would be defect, de deflected by certain masses, like he predicted how light would be deflected by the sun, for instance, and it's twice the deflection of what you get under Newtonian physics. So there is definitely testable high pr uh, predictions that were done by Einstein's equations that allowed us to know that he was, in fact, correct. Um, with Cavendish, I I'm, I'm not sure, um, because the, the, the gravitational attraction is caused by the bending of space-time. So I'm not saying it's two different things, like one is mass attracting mass and the other is bending of space-time. Um, I'm saying that the bending of space-time is what causes mass to attract mass. So I'm not, uh, you know, I'm not saying it's one thing or the other. I'm saying it's the same thing. Can I just give one thing that you can close? Absolutely. Did you know Cavendish is not an experiment and it's talk. It's just based on talk. It's the oscillations. Cavendish is not an experiment that's done experimentally all the time. Yeah, that, that's great. So it's called the Cavendish experiment, but it's not an experiment. It's just talk. It's science. It's a demonstration of talk. Yeah, no, it's not. Don't don't give me your conspiracy theory stuff. This this is wild conspiracy theory. The Cavendish experiment is an experiment. It's a famous experiment. It's one that's repeated in physics classes all the time. And just because some sort of person who is a conspiracy theorist says, no, that's not an experiment, doesn't mean it's not an experiment. It is. And all right. Can you give me any kind of citation for it not being well, an experiment? You just asked Can him a question. Any kind of, um, you know, scientist that says it's not an experiment. So the floor is yours flat, but then Mark is going to have the final word. Uh, the yep. data from the Cavendish is torsion. It's based on the torque from the torsion twist. That's mechanics of demonstrating mechanics of torsion. Not wow. Wow. Yeah, no, so he has no idea what he's talking about. The Cavendish experiment is an experiment. He hasn't actually said how he knows this. He's just given a wrong answer about how the actual experiment works. Look it up. Look up the experiment and see if it is mechanical torsion or whether it is gravity. Like, just don't believe a flat earther when they say, hey, that's not an experiment. Go for it. And all right, we have about five more minutes. So this is going to be the last few super chats. And then we are going to head out because we respect our interlocutors time. But it has been a fantastic debate. Some would even say amazing. And so a $22 super chat from Bearsworth. Mark, when you shave your head, do you just shave the sides in the back? um no why i don't understand what that's got to do with anything but sure uh in no fairness, i'm also in fairness i'm also receding very bad so well just just accept it and and shave you know that's what i say you know we support uh, actually types on my hair show. was burnt off with the incredible amount of calculations my brain does now i'm joking i'm so joking <laughs> seriously <laughs> and all right thank you so very much for the super chat bears worth and then your responses panel and then a five dollar super chat from cool lambo again thank you so very much what is the mechanism that NASA causes the Earth to be a closed system? Who's that for? That is for you, Flat. Oh, what is the mechanism that causes it to be a closed system? Yes. Um, they claim that the um, heliocentric belief is that it's an open system, yet they claim Earth to be a closed system, which contradicts the uh, thermodynamic definitions of a system i don't need to show any mechanics behind it because it's not me contradicting what a thermodynamic system is it's nasa 
Well, it, it's an open system because, you know, a certain amount of gas escapes and also the sun has to come in so that it can't be a closed system because energy, energy is coming energy, in from the outside. Yeah, energy goes through a closed system in and out. Matter can only stay in the system or outside the system if it's closed. And all right, thank you so very much for your responses and your support, Cool Lambo. And then a $20, thank you so much, from Yadian Flatzoid. Why do you think the Vera Azano is a tension bridge? Did NASA say so? There is on a bridge. It's got nothing to do with NASA. And yes, it's a tension bridge. That's how the mechanics of a tension bridge works. Thank you so very much for your support, Yadian. It really does help the channel grow and get even more amazing debates. And with that, we're going to nominal. Mark Reed, I'll take that as a no. Thanks. No, what? For what? I'll try and go back up to nominal. I think it's you shave your head on your sides in the back. I think it's about that. Well, um, it was also about the Cavendish proves mass, I believe. Oh. But then the well, uh, the, the question I was asked about Cavendish was that it, had, it was a two independent and a dependent variables. So um, I don't know what your take is a no. Oh, you muted, Amy. Amy, you muted. muted. Had to do it twice just to be lucky. You claim that Cavendish proves mass attracts mass, but then claim that gravity is bending the space-time. Is there an experiment that proves the bending of time? Uh, yeah, I gave, I gave um, Einstein's equations, testable predictions. All right, thank you so very much, Nominal, and thank you so much, Mark Reed, for your response. And then a 550 Congo Super Chat, Flatzoid, the fact that you're doing a live debate debunks your entire position. I don't know how, but okay. <laughs> thank you for the Super Chat, I guess. And all right, we have a 550, and thank you, Congo, 550 super chat from Keithman. Flatzoid, here's a hint. A pressure is measured in pascals. Same question. One liter of water displaced by a rock. Find the buoyant force using pressure. Sorry, I'm not going to do the math, no. You can do it up yourself. If you want to. <laughs> of course not. You, Figure it out yourself. you don't he know. Said, Mark, uh, is it my turn to talk or not? He can send it all he wants to. I don't need to do anything. Remember, you haven't provided gas pressure without containment for us. Okay, so where can I go to find a gas like an uncontained system? You can't because we're in a contained system. Congratulations. Exactly. So you're basically asking me to show something where I can't get, you're basically setting it up so I can't get to an uncontained system. So you're basically, it's a it's a dodge. It's just basically saying, hey, we're not an uncontained system. system. You you can't prove it because you can't go anywhere that there's an uncontained. Anything that I show, you'll say it's a contained system. So a weather system, you're like, it's a contained system. And yeah, it's in this system. And all right, This gentlemen. is a dishonesty. There is a single question, and then we are heading out. The last Super Chat of the night. I appreciate if any other Super Chats come in, but we just appreciate our interlocutor's time for coming on. And so, Maticus Minot, for $5, says both flat and round can work, I believe, more with simulation. Ooh. Whoever oh, wants to go first, I will hit your timer. Uh, 
Look, I could I talk for ages on hard solipsism, you know, simulation theory and things like that. Um, I think, I think though, you know, sort of it, it's interesting to talk about, although being unfalsifiable, maybe we will be able to falsify or to confirm it to be true in the future. But uh, I think that everything we gather is from the presumed simulation, so it's impossible to tell at the moment. Maybe we'll find out. Don't know. And all right, the floor is yours, Flatazoid, for the last statement of the night. Okay, yeah. Um, if he wants to believe in it, I would like to see the the uh, observations to present it. But yeah, everybody has their own belief and opinions on how we see everything. I mean, I think Mark would agree on this. It would be a boring life if we all believed exactly the same thing. So, yeah. Woohoo! Thank you so very much. And with that... I want to thank both our interlocutors, Flatzoid and Mark Reed, for coming on tonight. I want to also send love all the people out there, like Sideshow, working behind the scenes, our fantastic mods, keeping things so pretty, and most importantly, you our audience, for joining us on Modern Day Debate. We are a neutral non-partisan platform welcoming everybody from all walks of life if you're looking for even more fantastic debates we are all over the internet including your favorite podcasting platform like apple spotify or google Podcasts. so if you enjoy debates well why not look at the bottom right of your screen because you can see that DebateCon 3.1 conference is coming on Saturday, April 22nd in Fort Worth. Tickets are in the description box below along with all of our interlocutors links. And if you just have a dollar and you can't quite make it over there, you can get a live stream feed right to your door. Less than a cup and coffee, ladies and gentlemen. Woohoo! And if you enjoy the show, please don't forget to like, follow, and subscribe. Maybe even share. It helps us reach a wider audience, including tonight's debate on Is NASA Deceitful? With our debaters, Marguerite and Flatzoid, who are here to help us find that answer. Furthermore, like I said, if you like what any of our guests have said tonight, their links are right there in the description box below. Finally, if you're looking for even more fun in the sun, the after show on the MDD Discord is also throwing after parties and fun on the topic right down there as well in the description. With that, I am Amy Newman with Modern Day Debate, and we hope you continue having great conversations, discussions, and debates. Good night! Good night.